Greetings everyone, welcome to the Flying Doctor channel. Now, after my last video, I was flying around Vancouver trying to understand something that had been frustrating me for a while. In some places, VR felt really smooth and enjoyable, and in other places, airports that felt just as busy, well, performance just fell apart. At that point, I wasn't convinced I'd actually learned something useful. But around about the same time, I started seeing a lot of excitement about DLSS 4.5, people describing it as a big step forward, especially for VR. So I started testing it properly. This video isn't about a miracle fix, it's about what finally gave me a stable, predictable baseline and helped me understand why some things work in MSFS 2024 VR and others really don't. You don't need to have watched the previous video, I'll show you the settings that I ended up with and then explain why they worked, including a mistake I made early on that stopped DLSS from working at all. Welcome to the Flying Doctor channel, let's geek into it. Before we go any further, let me just walk you through the aircraft that I switched to and my settings. So firstly, I've returned to an old favourite of mine, the Cessna 172 Skyhawk with G1000 displays. Absolutely beautiful aircraft. Here we are in 2D. It's a favourite of mine, flies a lot slower than the PC-24. Not a bad thing if you're looking to go on scenic flights and watch the scenery and test the scenery as you go by. In terms of my system, I am running an RTX 4080 Super and that's paired with 16 core AMD Ryzen 9950X 3D. If you are on more modest hardware, start lower and work up. The important thing here is the order, not the numbers. So here are my settings. Just a friendly reminder, I do it all the time, even though I'd know my way around the menus. Uh, when you set your VR settings, don't forget to click on the VR box, because otherwise what you'll do is that you will get just the settings for 2D, which you don't want. Easy to think, oh, I made a change there, and you realise you've actually changed the 2D settings. So click into VR here. Now, my settings, you can see I'm on DLSS Super Resolution Balanced. The dynamic settings are on, that's crucial, I'll come to it later, and I've set those to 45, and in my Oculus headset, I'm set to aim for 72 frames per second. This is a major thing. I found that the biggest hit, and I shared this in the video before, was in the objects level of detail, that's what LOD means, and off and the terrain level of detail. So you can see mine are pretty high up here, uh, 280 for terrain level of detail um, and objects level of detail at 180. What I've done is I've pushed these as far as I can. I actually pushed them at Vancouver rather than Heathrow. Vancouver, though, is a slightly less demanding airport. It was on my system. And uh, then I've backed it right off. Uh, you can see my other quality settings. They're not actually really that low, although I would say that I'm pretty much on the edge here of what is possible. Have a look at my previous video, start with the presets and then work from there. What really matters here though is not the exact numbers, it's the order that you do things. 45 frames per second. First, you need to stop the simulator from trying to run flat out all the time. That means setting a sensible frame rate limit. As I say, I start with 45. Once you do that, the picture stops rushing and starts arriving more evenly, evenly and everything calms down. In more technical terms, that's about frame pacing, making sure frames arrive at a steady rhythm rather than in bursts. VR cares much more about that rhythm than about chasing the highest possible number. Yes, you can see on this example here a very low frame rate because but when my head is steady those frames are even moving my head you get a lack of evenness and the frame pacings is lost and then you get the screen door effect so a rock solid 45 frames per second arriving evenly 
can feel far better in VR than a messy 60 that keeps jumping around. If you think it's got to be 60, it's got to be 60. I expected DLSS just to work on its own without setting a frame rate limit. And I think, to be fair, it's pretty easy to do that. You're using DLSS and you can set it to that mode. You can easily see my setting here for balanced, but the dynamic settings are there. There's a telltale drop arrow there, but you can click on and off the dynamic settings. If you click it on, though, uh, what you miss, unless you do the drop down, is that you can set it here. And I've set mine to 45. Now, if you don't cap the sim, everything will start competing. The simulator, the graphics card, DLSS, and the VR system are all trying to run as fast as possible at the same time, so nothing ever settles. And once I've capped the sim at around 45 frames per second, everything suddenly made much more sense. I could actually do it at 30, and it was okay, and 50, 60, well, 60 I saw a drop in quality, but 45 seemed to work really well for me. The sim has a clear target. DLSS could do its job properly. Now, here am I pushing the sim to the Spike absolute there. max here. Not really DLSS any does not need the highest the frame buildings. rate. It needs predictability. When the timing is steady, DLSS can rebuild the image cleanly and recover quickly after a spike. Don't forget what DLS is doing is throwing interpolated images, new images, into the frame stream to, to smooth things out. And when the timing is chaotic, even the best upscaler in the world can't save it. That's why DLSS started working properly only after I limited here. the sim. You can see me putting the sim through its paces here. 22 frames per second just came from 21 overflying Heathrow, some of the most intense scenery in the world, expecting stutters to appear, realising that perhaps I won't be solve better, everything, but what looks okay. Look down to 90, down to 20, and yeah, you can see there's a real steadiness here. In fact, if I remember this pass correctly, I flew really close and was quite surprised at the smoothness of this object coming past. Big stutters. I mean, that's really an absolute asset. As you can see there's a couple of shudders, but scenery. we are really pushing the sim as hard as we can at the moment. And once that foundation was in place, then I could push the level of detail much higher than before. Not because DLSS is magic, but because the system finally had some breathing room. That's also why level of detail limits feel different from well, place to place in Flight Simulator 2024, because as we know from 2D, some areas load cleanly, others don't, and DLSS and can't fix uneven world loading. So the takeaway here is simple. Limit the sim first, let it settle, then turn things up. Now, here's a little bit of a confession. I do like this part of the... Uh, the, the record that I've made as I've gone through, there's a bit of an air incident about to happen uh, just on the runway we'll as we turn. To I'm pretty sure. Balance oh, it's now, coming up later. Sorry, think. I'm getting distracted. But I thought it would be helpful to talk about why 45 frames per second uh, worked. One reason is that it's close to half of the headset 72 hertz refresh rate. So I, in the streaming app, in the desktop streamer app or virtual desktop streamer that uh, you set the frame rate here we go air incident coming up uh, you set the frame rate and well balanced uh, already that's at 72 smoother. frames per second look at my previous video about other. the setup of uh, the streaming app see. if you want to see that um, so 45 or slightly balanced less really you'd need 36 is about half of the frame rate that's required now what's happening is i've got ssw switched off in the virtual desktop streamer that means i'm not relying on virtual desktop itself to generate the synthetic frames what is likely in, that's happening is that the headset runtime the quest the meta compositor puts everything together is very good at dealing with steady repeatable frame delivery so i'm interested in what happens if i put ssw on and rely on that instead but even without explicit reprojection enabled, 
uh, it behaves far better when the sim is feeding it frames at a consistent, sensible rate rather than bouncing all over the place. So there we are. The real win here isn't half of 72 a magic number. The real win is that 45 frames per second gives the whole pipeline room to breathe. The sim knows what it's aiming for. DLSS can stabilize the image and the VR compositor isn't constantly correcting mistakes. In other words, it's about that cadence, not chasing the headline number. So for most people, that probably means experimenting somewhere between the 40 to 50 frame per second range rather than fixating on 72 or 90. Find the number where your system stops fighting itself. That's the one that matters. Uh, yeah, and there's yet more work to be done because I'm interested in OK. Um, even though my previous video, I said don't layer processes. Uh, but what happens if DLSS is set to 45 frames per second and then I ask the streaming app, the desktop streamer, to make up the difference with SSW rather than just expecting the Oculus runtime to do it. So, yeah, there we go. And you're going to love this as well. When things are stable, you can do things like use sim rate selector and absolutely ram the simulator. There am I flying at eight times uh, speed uh, across London. This is this is free flight. This is uh, not just a recorded flight that is being played back at times eight. No, this is free flight. This is really me flying across London, then dropping deck down to one. And you can see the stability is there, not impacted one iota. So yes, I'm just flying into London, just looking at uh, the quality of the scenery that's available. I have to say, it does look fantastic there's me just changing some of the settings so as we take this thing home what's the most important thing that i've got that i think i can be able to bring i have tested nvidia dlss in-house so no dlss is, swapper this is the, the existing superb. nvidia driver and then simply seeing what dls that enables within the simulator choices itself. So this is just me gone NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution onto Balanced. Um, I tried Auto and it wasn't as good. Oh, and I tried uh, uh, I, I tried uh, Quality and I, I saw some stuttering. This was clearly working for me. Um, the frame rate target for me was 45. You want to experiment it. Don't miss the drop down under dynamic I still think settings, to take. as I pointed to earlier. And I am still on these high LOD values, 280 for terrain level of detail and 180 for objects level of detail. But the biggest lesson for me in this is don't chase the headline frame rate, chase stability. And uh, interesting that you know this is not using the virtual streamer interpolation as well on top of DLSS, having told DLSS to go to 45. Um, this is using the Oculus runtime the oculus doing its job i think either will work but what they depend on is a quality uh, set of images coming in that they can work on and and predictability there look at the quality of this scenery here so i'm flying across london this is orbix uh, landmark scenery so there's london city and london airport i've got 43 frames per second moving through there I've got a game latency of 25 milliseconds, which is pretty much nothing, and a latency on the frame rate of 78 milliseconds, which is, well, just something else. So, yes, I did spot a little bit of jitteriness and thought, well, I could come down on my settings, but quite frankly, there we are. There's a little, little, tiny little spike there, but quite frankly, really happy with what I'd achieved. So, yes. I'm now able to share the conclusion with other people that DLSS 4.5 is absolutely superb and is the takeaway, certainly now, instead of TAA. Because um, what's happening is that when the, when, when the, the CPU gets hit hard, TAA, TAA really struggles to, um, uh, to, to catch up and it leads to an inconsistency in the frames that are being passed on uh, into if you're using uh, the virtual desktop streamer it, the frames that are coming from the pc into the streamer or if you're just on link cable it's the same will apply so there's me just about to land in london we're going to go pretty close over the top of the scenery here and yeah um 43 frames per second 75 milliseconds no problem there 
And uh, oh, let's yeah, let's move it on. Let's look at the landing. I think the landing was half decent. Uh, but in my book, when you're down into worrying about the landings, I've got the technical stuff out of the way. Whoa, well, say, yeah, we had a few problems there, didn't we? We've uh, we've had a few. Um, I haven't. I have to sort of stress that. But um, yeah, I think that's crosswind going on there. Um, but we managed to land at uh, London City. You can see that's a very intense airport as well. Frame rate down to 37, 38 frames per second. But still pretty smooth as we land there. And uh, yes. Okay, take care, folks. Stay safe. I hope that was helpful. And uh, do so put what in the established comment section uh, what you're finding in this aircraft. Any little golden um, nuggets. I've had some great frame rate comments. Over per 200 second. comments. DLSS on. If you like what you see, please um, like and do subscribe. It makes all the difference in the world. Take care and stay safe.